Hi, this is Vanessa and team. Welcome back to the latest update of Aze News. Timorese National Parliament agreed to the proposed program by the newly formed ninth government. On July 18, 2023, the ninth government, led by Prime Minister Karala Shanana Guzmaum, presented a program to the National Parliament in order to seek for approval from the legislatures as per constitutional mandated. At the end of the two days' debate, the program was unanimously approved by the majority benches. Shannon Guzman expressed his profound gratitude to all the members of the parliament for being able to educate the society and the young generation of the country in the maturity of their politics. For the first time, the debate in this parliament demonstrated on how we start to teach the young people in our society about the maturity of our politics. If this will keep on going in our country, our people will move forward. Thank you and thank you. <laughs> Fernando Lai, the parliament speaker, added that in this year's program debate are calm and constructive. The newly formed nine government program will be implemented during five years period starting from 2023 to 2028. The proposed program comprises six main areas such as reaffirms the rule of law, of democracy, develop the social capital, infrastructure and economy, consolidation of the governance, and promotes a good governance and fight the corruption. Fritling asked the newly formed ninth government of Timor-Leste to lead with responsibility. During the national parliament debate proposed by newly formed ninth government led by Shalana Guzman, Aniseto Guterres from the opposition party Fritling said, Ninth constitutional government are required to govern with full responsibility and guarantee the political stability in the country. The two days debate started on 18th of July and ended on 19th of July 2023. Fritlin, as an active and constructive opposition, wants this ninth constitutional government to lead until its final mandate. Now it's the time to enhance a new democratic culture in Timor-Leste and a government that leads should have lead until the end of its terms to ensure the political stability and prevent the loss of opportunity of the development. The proposed program comprises six main areas such as reaffirms the rule of law, of democracy, develop the social capital, infrastructure and economy, consolidation of the governance, and promotes a good governance and fight the corruption. Canada expresses support of ASEAN centrality in Myanmar crisis. Is the formal pose. Canada's Foreign Minister Melanie Jolie reiterated support for ASEAN centrality in the resolution of the ongoing Myanmar military crisis during an ASEAN ministerial conference in Jakarta. ASEAN and Canada has agreed to establish a strategic partnership this year. This strategic partnership will open a new chapter in our relations with determination to further deepen and consolidate our partnership, building a strong link between the peoples of ASEAN and Canada. Canada supports ASEAN centrality and leadership in responding to the crisis including through the five-point consensus and the work of the Office of the ASEAN Special Envoy. We support efforts towards a peaceful and democratic Myanmar and durable solutions for Rohingya refugees. The violence perpetrated by the military must end and humanitarian support must be able to reach those most in need. The gathering of ASEAN comes as Beijing were sting among its 10 members over Myanmar's military rulers' refusal to hold hostilities and start inclusive dialogue as agreed by its top general in April 2021. China and ASEAN on right path of common development and prosperity. <laughs> Director of the Office of the Central Commission for Foreign Affairs, Wang Yi said, China and ASEAN have placed the right path for forging long-term good neighbor lines while achieving common development and prosperity. The senior Chinese diplomat made the remarks while attending the ASEAN-China Foreign Ministers meeting, introducing the achievements of all-round expansion of mutually beneficial cooperation between China and the ASEAN. 
He said over the past 20 years, China and ASEAN have actively implemented the purposes of principles of the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation in Southeast Asia and expanded mutually beneficial cooperation of all fronts. Wong said China and ASEAN have helped each other, shared development opportunities and overcome the challenge of the pandemic. China has reached important consensus with Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, Myanmar, Laos, Cambodia on jointly building a community with a shared future. Anthony Blinken says broad support the ASEAN meeting to keep pushing the military to end the conflict in Myanmar. The United States Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said that there was broad support in his meetings with Southeast Asian countries for continuing to press Myanmar's junta to end the violence in the country. As we work to advance this affirmative vision, this affirmative agenda for the region, we're responding to challenges to our shared security and prosperity and to the broader international order. As the military regime in Myanmar continues to commit atrocities and undermine regional stability, there was broad support in today's meetings for continuing to press the regime, to end the violence, and to fulfill its commitments under ASEAN's five-point consensus. Blinking at the news conference in Jakarta after attending ASEAN-related meetings said, the situation in Myanmar since the February 2021 coup continues to undermine security in the region. South Korea committed to stronger partnership with ASEAN. South Korean Foreign Minister Park Jin said his country will expand its partnership with ASEAN at the meeting with the Southeast Asian counterparts. In his opening remarks for the meeting in Jakarta, Vietnam Foreign Minister Bui Tan Son said ASEAN welcomes South Korea's commitment to build a stronger partnership with the bloc. We are very pleased to witness that our partnership and cooperation has gone, grown from strength to strength, despite all difficulties and challenges. We welcome our case commitments to building a stronger partnership with ASEAN. More proactive role for a free, peaceful and prosperous Indo-Pacific. I also made clear that ASEAN would continue to remain prominent in ROK's foreign policy. A year after, I'm pleased to see that we have made much headway most notably the Korea ASEAN Solidarity Initiative, or CASI, has been launched as our policy specifically tailored to ASEAN. South Korea is an important economic partner for ASEAN, being the bloc's fifth largest trading partner and seventh largest source of foreign direct investment for the region. ASEAN also holds the East Asia Summit and the ASEAN Regional Forum with the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, both slated to attend. Top diplomats greet Indonesian President as security meeting starts. Foreign ministers and top diplomats greeted Indonesian President Joko Widodo ahead of the ASEAN Regional Forum in Jakarta on the final day of the bloc's annual ministerial meeting. Among those attending were U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and Chinese top diplomat Wang Yi, replacing Foreign Minister Ching Gang, who is absent due to health reasons. In opening remarks, ASEAN Chair Widodo said the gathering aimed to seek solutions rather than exacerbate regional and global problems. The United States-China rivalry and the war in Ukraine and North Korean missiles are said to dominate roundtable talks in Southeast Asia's annual security gathering. ASEAN Plus 3 cooperation, which includes China, Japan and South Korea. Allow me to count in 3, 2, 1. Foreign ministers of the ASEAN Plus 3 cooperation, which includes China, Japan and South Korea, stressed on the importance of ASEAN centrality and unity amid global challenges during a conference in Jakarta. We must sustain peace and security by respecting international law and pursuing the spirit of multilateralism. APT should support the way ASEAN builds an inclusive regional architecture and implements ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific through concrete action. Colleagues, APT has been our anchor for offer our steadfast support for ASEAN centrality and the AOIP. We will work closely 
to effectively implement the new work plan and ensure that the ASEAN Plus 3 remains as the main vehicle for regional cooperation. Chinese top diplomat Wang Yi, who attended the conference, is expected to meet U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken in a bilateral meeting at the ASEAN summit. Their scheduled meeting follows Blinken's visit to Beijing last month as the two superpowers, which are also the world's two largest economies, aim to ease their intense rivalry. Japan and China discuss Fukushima and regional concerns on the ASEAN sidelines. Japanese Foreign Minister Yoshimasa Hayashi met with China's top diplomat Wang Yi, bringing to focus ties between the two nations and concerns regarding the release of radioactive water from the Fukushima nuclear power plant. Hayashi and Wang shook hands warmly ahead of the meeting, where both sides affirmed the importance to hold constructive talks and work together. According to a statement released by the Japanese Foreign Minister, Japan called on China to approach the water discharge in a scientific manner. China has criticized Japan's plan to release over 1 million tons of water from the wrecked Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant starting this summer. Relations between the two countries have also become tense as China asserts its maritime ambitions in the region, which Hayashi touched on during his meeting with Wong. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with Indonesian Minister of Foreign Affairs Retno Marsudi. Blinken said the two nations share a common vision of the future in the region and the regional strategies each side is pursuing are closely coincident. I think we share uh, the same vision for the region uh, that we share, a free, uh, open, secure, prosperous, connected, resilient region. And the work that we're doing together is trying to uh, make that vision real uh, in, in very concrete ways for our people. And our own Indo-Pacific strategy are very closely coincident mm. in uh, the uh, perspectives and the views that they bring to what we're trying to achieve. Uh, a strong adherence to ASEAN centrality. We're reaffirming that here uh, in Jakarta. And thank you very much for having this second strategic uh, dialogue. I also appreciate you for joining the uh, ASEAN uh, summit. It's under the championship and of course Indonesia and ASEAN. For us, ASEAN-US partnership is very crucial for both regional as well as global stability. We need more collaboration among nations to address all these challenges, including of course in the Indo-Pacific. Blinken was in Indonesia for the 56th ASEAN Foreign Ministers meetings with his counterparts from around the region. We have reached the end of today's program, everyone. Have a nice and lovely weekend, and see you all again soon.